Hello, and thank you for joining us today to learn about VTA's BART Phase 2 project. My name is Gretchen Beisa, and I'm the Community Outreach Supervisor for the Phase 2 project. Erica Rokes, an engineer on our planning and outreach team, will be giving today's presentation. And so with that, I'll hand it over to Erica to get started. I'm going to give an overview of the project, including what has already been done and what to expect over the next few years. With that said, let's get started. Currently, BART operates as far south as Warm Springs in Fremont, as you can see in the small map on the right. UTA's BART Silicon Valley program aims to fill the missing gap to ring the bay with frequent rail transit. The project is being delivered in two phases. Phase one is a 10-mile extension with two stations, Milpitas and one in Berryessa, North San Jose. The construction is essentially complete, and phase one is expected to open in late 2019. Phase two is a six-mile extension, of which five miles will be in an underground tunnel. The phase two extension has four stations and includes a maintenance facility in Santa Clara. VTA and BART have been working closely together to get to where we are today. Santa Clara County is not part of the BART district, which is why VTA and BART have a unique relationship critical to delivering this project. In each agency's roles are outlined in the comprehensive agreement. VTA covers all costs associated with the construction, operation, and maintenance of the Silicon Valley Extension. It also oversees contracting and procurement for the project, including construction. Once constructed, VTA will retain ownership of the all infrastructure. BART is providing technical assistance during the planning, design, and construction of the project. Once constructed, BART will operate and maintain the system. BART will also determine service levels and operating hours. As I'm sure many of you are aware, VTA's BART Silicon Valley has been in the planning phases for many, many years. It all started back in 2001 when VTA conducted a major investment study to evaluate the feasibility of extending BART to the Silicon Valley. In 2009, the project was split into two phases, phase one and phase two that we know today, and a decision was made to advance the extension to Berryessa North San Jose. Construction for phase one began in 2012. In 2014, VTA once again ramped up the planning for the phase two extension, picking up where we had left off in 2009. The draft phase two environmental document was released to the public in 2016. And in 2018, the VTA board of directors approved the phase two extension project and certified the final environmental document. And we received the record of decision from the federal government, which was the final step in the federal environmental process. This is a really important step forward for the project as it allowed us to enter into the engineering phase and be able to apply for federal funding. VTA identified a funding strategy for $5.581 billion. The project has significant local support with 75% of the funding coming from local and state resources, which have already been approved. The remaining funding would be granted by the Federal Transit Administration. As VTA advances design, we'll be able to refine the project costs, the funding strategy, and the schedule in preparation for our FTA application submittal. We're currently aiming to receive this last $1.4 billion from FTA in early 2021. VTA is pursuing a new federal grant program known as the Expedited Project Delivery Pilot Program, or EPD for short. The EPD program includes a requirement for public-private partnership and limits federal funding to 25% of the total project cost. As I mentioned in the previous slide, VTA's funding strategy includes local and state funding to cover the remaining 75% of the project's costs. This slide shows some of our recent and upcoming milestones. As I mentioned in an earlier slide, 2018 was a big year for the project, with the VTA Board of Directors approving the project and the federal government issuing a record of decision. These two milestones allowed us to enter the engineering and pre-construction phase. We are in the engineering phase, and our principal objective over the next year is to advance the design from a conceptual level to a preliminary engineering level, which is roughly 30% design. We anticipate submitting our FTA grant application for the federal dollars I mentioned earlier in fall of 2020, and this application will be based on preliminary engineering and will include updates to the project cost, funding strategy, and the schedule. We hope to receive FTA funding in early 2021. 
BTA's BART Silicon Valley Phase 2 has a number of benefits for the region. One big reason that this project is that this project will connect the counties of San Francisco, San Mateo, Alameda, Contra Costa, and Santa Clara with improved, seamless, and frequent commuter rail service around the Bay. A second benefit of this project is that it will connect to many regional transit services, including VTA light rail and bus, Caltrain, Altamont Commuter Express, Capital Corridor, Amtrak, inner city buses, and in the future, high-speed rail. We are anticipating half of the BART riders to access the system through transit modes. Stations will also accommodate bus, bicycle, and pedestrian travel options, encouraging community members to choose healthier and greener transportation modes to get to the station. This slide shows the BART Silicon Valley Phase 2 alignment. There are four proposed stations, Allen Rock 28th Street, Downtown San Jose, Deardon, and Santa Clara Station, adjacent to the current Santa Clara Caltrain Station. The first three stations will be underground, while the Santa Clara Station will be at street level. The extension also includes the construction of a maintenance facility. One of the most unique elements of the Phase 2 extension is that the train will run in a single large diameter tunnel that will accommodate two train tracks, one for each direction. The image you see on the left is an example of a tunnel boring machine, also called TBM for short. A TBM includes a cutter head, shown in green in the picture, which rotates to dig through soil and rock. The excavated material is then removed through a conveyor system within the machine. A typical TBM can excavate about 40 to 50 feet of tunnel per day, depending on soil conditions. This project will be the first time the single bore tunnel is used for a transit system in the US. One reason VTA and BART chose the single bore tunnel for the project is because it allows the street above to remain intact and have minimal impact on underground utilities. The station entrances and facilities will be constructed off street as shown in the image to the right. The stations will be constructed primarily behind the sidewalk and out of the public right away. This will be similar to general building construction as shown on the image to the left, which is a residential project across from San Jose City Hall. The construction of the project will result in temporary lane closures. VTA will provide detours and directional signage for all travel options through the construction areas. One traffic lane will always be open. VTA is committed to minimizing construction impacts in the surrounding neighborhoods. The final environmental document, which is available on our website, outlines several ways we plan to do this. One of our commitments is to protect historic properties, including the Five Wounds Portuguese National Parish and properties located in the downtown historic district. VTA is working to hire a historic building expert to review the project's design and to coordinate closely with VTA staff to make sure historic properties are protected. Before construction begins, VTA will survey all properties around the, our construction areas, both historic and non-historic. VTA will also measure ambient noise and vibration levels, and we'll install monitoring devices to track noise, vibration, and settlement during construction. Once construction is complete, VTA will construct post, conduct post-construction surveys. We want to spend some time to describe the future BART stations. I should note that this plan and the ones you'll see on the following slides are concepts that were used for our environmental clearance. These concepts will likely be refined and change as we progress in the engineering and design phase. The first station along the phase two extension will be the Allen Rock 28th Street station. The station is located between Highway 101 and 28th Street, just north of Santa Clara Street. And the Five Wounds Church is adjacent to the project site. As you can see, the station itself, which will be underground, is in yellow. The next station will be in downtown San Jose. The downtown San Jose station will serve as the premier transit station in San Jose's central business district with the highest ridership on the phase two extension. The station is located on East Santa Clara Street between Market and Third and will interface with the VTA bus and light rail service. The station platform shown in yellow would be located within the single bore tunnel below Santa Clara Street. The main entrance would be located on the VTA block between Market and Street and First Street, where VTA's customer service center currently stands. VTA intends to redevelop the VTA block to, to provide additional office and retail space. The VTA block is bounded by the red dashed line between Market and First. 
on the site plan. Next on the alignment is the Deardon Station, the main intermodal hub in San Jose. The Deardon Station will provide direct connections to VTA light rail, Caltrain, ACE, and Amtrak. The BART Station will be located below West Santa Clara Street between Autumn Street and the Caltrain tracks. The Santa Clara Station will be the end of the line station for the project. The station is planned to be located at the southern end of Brokaw Road across the railroad tracks from the existing Santa Clara Caltrain station. Unlike the previous three stations, the Santa Clara BART station will be constructed at ground level and will be accessible to the west via pedestrian tunnel under the Caltrain tracks. In addition to the platform and system facilities, the station will include parking for up to 500 BART parking spaces, as well as office space, retail, and residential development. As engineering plans are advanced, the exact sizing, orientation, and configuration of the station will likely be refined. The new hall maintenance facility would be constructed to accommodate the new service provided by the BART extension. This facility will be located immediately northeast of the Caltrain Railroad Corridor on the former UP New Hall Yard that VTA purchased in 2004. The roughly 40-acre facility will include storage for BART vehicles. Some of the key elements of the new hall maintenance facility could include a train car washer, an inspection pit, maintenance shops, and various train control, power, and communication facilities. As I stated earlier, the project is now in the engineering and pre-construction phase. We've been conducting field investigations to better understand the subsurface conditions, which is needed to inform our engineering work. You may have seen this equipment out along the alignment, or you may have received construction notices as we're collecting utility and geotechnical data throughout this year. For utility investigations, crews carefully remove the soil to verify the exact location of the underground utilities, such as water, power, communications, and sewer lines. Most utilities are located less than six feet below the ground. Survey teams record the exact location of the utility, crews then backfill the hole and replace the pavement. For geotechnical investigations, crews drill a small hole up to 150 feet deep to collect soil and groundwater samples. While the BART extension is extending BART to Santa Clara County, this project is about much more than transit infrastructure. This project provides us the opportunity to shape the station areas through creating a walkable, lively, mixed-use communities all centered around the BART station. We believe this project presents a once-in-a-century opportunity to organize growth around the station areas. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, BTA is pursuing federal funding through the EPD program, which requires some public-private partnership. We think that working on a cohesive strategy around transit-oriented communities will facilitate and present more opportunities for such partnerships. Successful transit-oriented communities would increase ridership and ensure a return on transit investment. Lastly, we feel the station areas can accommodate more development than is currently planned for, and so this study aims to highlight this potential growth and provide a path for achieving it. VTA received a grant from the federal government to study and develop strategies for transit-oriented development along the BART corridor. This study includes both land use strategies and access recommendations for Allen Rock 28th Street, downtown San Jose, and Santa Clara Station. The, station, the study kicked off in January of 2018 and expected to be finalized this fall. I'll now pass it back to Gretchen to talk about VTA's BART Phase Two outreach. I'm going to wrap up this presentation by talking about community engagement and outreach. We've written up a document that guides our work, the Construction, Education, and Outreach Plan. It's divided into five parts, general outreach, stakeholder engagement, business resources, placemaking, and on the radar. General outreach and stakeholder engagement are the key to our plan. First, there's general outreach. General outreach is meant to make sure that the broader community is informed about the phase two project. Our website, fact sheets, social media, all of that is general outreach. Stakeholder engagement is more targeted. We join community meetings and talk to folks one-on-one. -on -one. Here's some of the work that we've done so far in both general outreach and stakeholder engagement. We've written mailers, newsletters, fact sheets, and done webinars. Uh, we've made neighborhood and business association presentations, done door-to-door -door noticing for field investigations, 
we hold bi-monthly community working group meetings, and we've also held tours and site visits. Another part of our construction education and outreach plan is business resources. Although construction for a single bore tunnel is very similar to the construction that we see for a large building, we are still building a large infrastructure project and just like any other project, we will be in active construction, which can bring challenges for businesses. We expect that the project will bring a huge benefit when it's complete, but planning right now will help us all get through construction. Right now, we're making sure that we understand what assistance and support services might be needed and the makeup of businesses along the alignment. VTA will be conducting a small business assistance study, which should be complete by early next year. And that study, along with input from local businesses and other partners, will help us put together an action plan. And once heavy construction begins, we will implement that plan which will certainly include signage, access, and visibility, and we will continue throughout construction. As we get closer to construction, we will develop the placemaking and on the radar sections of the construction education and outreach plan. We are thrilled about this project and we're building it for you. So we ask you to get involved. We will continue to host public meetings, and as we near construction, VTA will open field offices near the station areas for neighbors to get information. We'll also be organizing some fun stuff, a tunnel boring machine naming contest, working with artwork along the construction sites. We ask you to do the most important thing you can do, and that is support businesses along the alignment near construction. And we also ask you to keep yourself informed and spread the word as well. We are online and on social media. And you can sign up to receive updates in our newsletter at vta.org slash phase two info. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn more about VTA's BART phase two project. We hope that you stay informed and we hope to see you the next time.